you have a thirst to learn about wine? Do you love stories about wonderfully obsessive people, hauntingly beautiful places, and amusingly awkward social situations? Well, that's the blend here on the Unreserved Wine Talk podcast. I'm your host, Natalie McLean, and each week I share with you unfiltered conversations with celebrities in the wine world, as well as confessions from my own tipsy journey as I write my third book on this subject. I'm so glad you're here. Now pass me that bottle, please, and let's get started. Welcome to episode 25. In today's episode, we're chatting with Morgan Perry, who pairs wine and yoga in her Vino Vinyasa classes. Now, before I get started, I want to give a shout out to Lorna in Ottawa, who emailed about episode 20, which was all about Malbec. To say, Natalie, I enjoyed this podcast a lot. I learned new things about Malbec and learning new things and making new discoveries always makes me happy. Well, Lorna, I'm so glad you enjoyed that episode. Malbec does have an incredibly fascinating history and more importantly, an incredibly great taste for the money. So folks, if you missed that episode, number 20, go back and take a listen. I'll continue to give a shout out to those who've been kind enough to post a review on Apple Podcasts, social media, or email. So if you want me to mention your website or social media handle, please include that in your review along with your name. Now, back to this episode. Today's guest was actually recommended to me by one of my online course students. You're going to discover whether Cabernet or Shiraz pairs best with downward dog pose and more. This really is more than marketing or whimsy. It's actually rooted in a holistic lifestyle philosophy. Enjoy. Herring, wine, and yoga. Is it a stretch? Sorry, I couldn't resist that. (laughs) But when you pair wine and yoga, what do they have in common? The relaxation, the mindfulness. Can you double your Zen quotient by bringing them together? Our guest is a former PR professional turned wine enthusiast turned yoga instructor. She created Yoga Unwind as a way to combine everything she loves. Her classes bring together vinyasa-based yoga and fun wine facts through creative yoga poses. And she joins me from her home in Austin, Texas. Welcome, Morgan Perry. Hello. Hi. Thanks so much for having me. So glad you're here. This is such an interesting topic. Morgan, let's just kick it off with how did you come up with the idea to pair wine and yoga? Well, they're two of my favorite things. And I started practicing yoga probably now about eight years ago. But it wasn't until I quit my full-time job doing wine, PR, and marketing where I went away to a yoga teacher training in the Dominican Republic. And part of our training at the end, you have to do like a final exam, if you will, and teach a class to all your fellow yogi teachers. So I taught a class where I just decided to pull wine in. You know, we had been drinking wine together the entire time we were down there. And I started just giving some wine facts during the flow. And then I ended with a meditation or a shavasana and then we had everyone taste the wines at the end of class. So they were really applying everything that I told them on their mat into their glass. So this was just a fun project for me. And after class, everyone came up to me, literally almost every single student there. And they said, wow, that was amazing. I had no idea you knew that much about wine. And are you going to do this when you go back to New York? (laughs) That's great. So I was shocked. I just knew at that point that I had something really, really special. And a lot of people do pair yoga and wine in different ways, but I think Mm -hmm. linking the education is really what makes it special and unique. And we're going to get into just how you do that, because I'm curious, when you're combining wine and yoga, are you posing and pairing? Are you doing like Cabernet during Downward Dog, or how does it work inside your yoga class? So because I come from a wine marketing background, and I do work with a lot of wine brands, and also my personal beliefs are really to be socially responsible. That comes first before everything. So we actually don't drink any wine during the yoga class. We just drink at the end, but we are learning about the wine during the class. So how it works is a 45 minute flow. I will teach you 
maybe 20 wine facts. So I actually taught at a vineyard today and we went through, we learned about Chardonnay. I gave them about 20 facts about Chardonnay and they're holding poses that are kind of easy to pose. So if you're a yogi, you'll know warrior two, chair pose. You may argue with me about if that one's easy to hold. Downward facing dog. Sometimes I have them in child's pose if I'm talking a little bit longer. So those kinds of poses where I can give you a quick fact and then we move through a vinyasa. So we keep their bodies moving, but then they'll pause for a fact. So it's kind of broken up in that way. And that lasts for about 45 minutes. And then after that is the Shavasana. So we'll do different types of things. Let me just hold you there for a minute. For those who don't know yoga, a vinyasa, what is that if you can describe it? So vinyasa is a flow, a style of yoga where you're flowing, you're linking one breath with each movement. And an actual vinyasa is something that starts out where you are moving from Tadasana at the top of your mat, moving through your plank to Chaturanga to an upward dog or any kind of backbend cobra to a downward dog and then coming back to the front of your mat. So that's just a typical vinyasa. We'll add those in and we'll do different types of sun salutations, sun salutation A that I just described, sun salutation B to keep the body moving. But I may have you pause in warrior two and then I'll talk. That's excellent. I love that. And the Shavasana is the end pose, right? Shavasana is everyone's favorite pose. Because <laughs> what are you doing when you, you do that? lay on your mat. Just lay down like a lay. corpse. Exactly. Yes. Corpse pose is what it's okay. called. Shavasana is the Sanskrit. So you are laying on your mat. And what I like to tell people is you're absorbing all of the asanas or the physical practices of yoga. You're absorbing those in your body. Mm -hmm. And then your mind is actually absorbing all of the facts that I told you about the mind. Ah, you're bringing it all together then. They have about five minutes and they lay on their mats. And sometimes I'll just play music. Today we actually had some sound bowls that we were playing and doing a little bit of uh, meditation with that. And then while they're laying down, I'm pouring the wines. And then myself and sometimes someone at the winery or if I have an assistant with me that day, will pass the wines out. So they're laying out chilling. We're passing out the wines. And when they open their eyes, I lead them through a little meditation, just a visualization kind of saying, imagine these grapes growing wherever they're growing for this particular class in Italy or in the Texas Hill Country or wherever it might be, I kind of lead them through the winemaking process in a really brief meditation where they have their eyes closed. Then they open their eyes and voila, two glasses of wine await. And then I lead them through a wine tasting. So then they're really able to take everything that they've learned and see it and smell it and taste it. And I just love seeing my students' eyes light up. Wow, that sounds fantastic. You're so relaxed already. And then you get that double hit, if you will, of the wine tasting. Now, you also have renamed the Shavasana pose, I think, or you use a different term. I've renamed a few poses. (laughs) Tell us what name do you give the corpse pose or the Shavasana pose? I actually haven't renamed that one, but I probably should. Is that the cork pose? So I I do have a corkscrew pose. Oh, a corkscrew pose. There's a pose where it's called standing split. You're in a forward fold and then you lift one leg up. Okay. And it's called standing splits, but 99% of people can't really do the splits very easily, right? So most people just have their leg up in the air at a 90 degree angle to their other leg. And it's not really a split, but you know, it looks a lot like a corkscrew. That's great. I love it. (laughs) So I call that one corkscrew pose. Another one that we'll do is cactus where their arms are at a 90 degree angle. And so I always do wine glass arms. (laughs) <laughs> That's and great. then I say something, you know, where we're doing a back bend in this pose. And I'm always like, you know, don't spill your wine. But to be honest, I don't incorporate too many of the poses to be too cutesy like that, because, you know, it gets a little much after a while. So I do that a few times. And then we'll incorporate the movement of the body in what we're talking about. So for mm-hmm. example, today, I taught about Chardonnay, as I mentioned, and I talked about cool climate versus warm climate. So we're in downward facing dog or we're in a wide leg forward prasarita forward fold. I'll say, you know, this is a cooling pose. Your heart is below your belly. So cooler climate wines, X, Y, Z, you know, and I talk about that. So I will use what's happening in the body to describe something about the wine sometimes. Wow. Fascinating. 
Now, there's the thing about yogis. Now, yoga is an ancient tradition, so is wine. So that's definitely one thing they have in common. But I've read in some places that alcohol is to be avoided by yogis. But maybe you can comment on that, why you're bringing them together when maybe this ancient tradition said avoid alcohol. Absolutely. And I think that yoga and yogis have evolved a lot in the last several hundred years since the Hatha Yoga text was written in the 15th century. So yoga is something that used to be practiced by a much smaller group of people. And I mean, at this point, I think the last number I read was 36 million people in the United States alone practicing yoga. So I don't have statistics, and I should do a study on this, honestly, on how many people that do yoga drink wine. But I like to think if there was a Venn diagram, there would be a very heavy overlap in that. So I am all about traditions, but I also think that things evolve for a reason. And there's hip hop yoga and there's goat yoga now and oh, really? all sorts of different yoga that people can do. And I think it's really finding what is right for you, what's right for your body and what gets you onto the mat and gets you moving and then helps you feel relaxed at the end of the day. And so why don't we, or maybe I'm missing this, but why don't we see tequila in yoga or beer in yoga? I have seen beer yoga before. Oh, okay. I haven't done a beer yoga myself, not because I wouldn't actually. I do like a good beer occasionally. I think most wine drinkers do, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we'll go on a wine tour for a week and then say, I really should beer at this point. But I do love wine. I have a passion for wine. I've studied wine forever and... That's why I decided to pair wine and yoga. I think that there's a lot about the balance between the two that go together. So for me, that's what works. But I think that you could really do this class with the educational component built in with really anything. You could do it with perfume and then smell perfume at the end of the class. You know, it doesn't even have to be a drink. I think you can really incorporate education into any kind of exercise. But yoga just works for me. Absolutely. It's about engaging all of the senses, I think, you know, and that really is a holistic way to approach Absolutely. Yes. our humanity. Yes. <laughs> so both wine and yoga can be intimidating for a lot of people. And the idea yes. of combining them can be, well, doubly intimidating. How do you make it accessible? So one of the things that I always say when we start to do our wine tasting I joke about this during class, and I'm like, you guys, we're in a wine tasting class. So if you can't get to this pose, don't worry about it. This is not a serious yoga class. And I really teach an all levels class. So I try to make everyone comfortable. And, you know, I always tell people, please skip the vinyasas. Please take a child's pose. I take so many child's poses and skip vinyasas. And to how my body's feeling that day, I might be tired. You know, maybe I went to the concert the night before. But another thing with the wine tasting portion of it, which I actually think for a lot of people is even more intimidating. And I'm sure you've seen this, you know, when you're in a wine tasting and you ask someone a question and it's just deer in headlights. So I say, hey, we are sitting on the floor. We're in our yoga clothes and we're tasting wine. So this is not a serious wine tasting. And if you're tasting chapstick or bubble gum, or whatever it is, I want you to please tell me your tasting notes. The more fun the tasting notes are, the more entertaining this will be. You know, I sort of open it up like that and just invite people to share. My students usually do interact quite a bit, and I'll usually lead them with a couple things about what we're going to taste during the class. So they already have an idea in their head. So we usually get a pretty interactive class, and I think I do my best to make it really accessible for everyone. That's really great. And what's the most interesting thing someone has said about your class? They finished your class and... Yes, I had an amazing situation where a woman came up to me after class and said, I just got back from South Africa. I visited seven wineries or something like that while I was down there in the wine country. And she said, I think I just learned more in your one yoga class. I found that so flattering and it's really, really, really stuck with me. Morgan, do you teach yoga for seniors? So I can teach yoga for all levels. I've taught some beginner classes. I've been asked to teach some corporate classes. So we're doing more stuff in chairs. And I've done some more advanced flows. So yes, I would absolutely be able to do a seniors class. Right now, we're only offering classes in New York and Austin, Texas. But we are in the works to open up somewhere, hopefully in California, pretty soon. I don't want to say too much because it's not official yet. But we are looking to expand to other states and cities here in the U.S. and 
definitely if there's places that want to have us come and do something at the vineyard that I taught at today, outside of Austin, we're doing a monthly class. So, you know, we're definitely open to collaborations and to spreading and taking over the world. That's great. So yeah, that reminds me, do you mostly teach your classes at wineries? Is that where you do them? Well, actually, today was my first class at an actual winery because I was in New York City for the first year that I started this company. There are some urban wineries there and I I am chatting with a couple of those, but it's harder out there because it's just a city. So I was doing, uh, it's just a city. (laughs) I was doing classes there at places like hotels, co-working spaces. Some yoga studios where we'll offer it as a workshop, but what's been really cool about being in Austin is wine country is a 30 minute drive away, 45 minutes maybe at the most. Mm -hmm. So you can actually really easily from the city get out to the wine country. So today was my first class at a vineyard out here, but I'm hoping to do more and I'd love to do more out in Long Island, out in New York and places like that. Yeah. I would think people would want to import you, so to speak, for a retreat weekend at a winery. Yes. And that is something we're working on as well. I'm working with a company to organize some luxury yoga and wine retreats. So that should be coming up either later this year or early next year. So I'm really, really excited about that. And I actually get a lot of messages on Instagram and Facebook and through our website, like, do you do retreats? Do you do retreats? We've been getting a lot of asks. So I'm really excited to have that coming up soon. Awesome. So in the winery today, where were you? Were you in the vines or were you in the winery? Where were you? Well, it's Texas and it's August. So (laughs) (laughs) kind of hot. Yeah. I mean, I I would love to do yoga in the vines and I've seen people doing that on Instagram and it looks beautiful. And I've been out into the vines and drank wine and in some photos, but we haven't actually taught a class out in the vines yet. We were in the barrel room today. So nice nice and cool. Yeah. Nice AC, but (laughs) <laughs> we did talk about maybe in October, November, when it starts to cool down here and doing some classes out in the winery and the vines. So Yeah. And have you ever done hot yoga in an outside environment? Well, it was accidentally hot. <laughs> <laughs> oh, where <laughs> was that? On a roof deck, we did have an event where it was pretty sunny and we just said, all right, it's hot yoga. Here we go. We're going to sweat. <laughs> But it was a rosé class, so that worked. You know, it wasn't like we were drinking Cabernet after that. It was, yeah. it was rosé, and everyone just found the rosé extra refreshing that day. I'll bet. I'll bet. And so do you think this whole thing is a growing trend of wineries offering yoga classes, yoga studios offering wine tastings and retreats and so on? Do you see it growing? I do. I yeah. do. And I follow a couple of hashtags on Instagram, yoga and wine, vino vinyasa, those kind of hashtags just to see what other people are doing. So I have noticed a lot of wineries offering this. A lot of yoga studios will say we're having wine and yoga night where, you know, they're not educating the consumers on the wine in the way that I do, but they are having a yoga class and then having something social after and having the wine. And that's another really cool thing is that after class, you're not done. You're not rolling up your mat and leaving. You're staying, you're finishing off the wine that we were tasting. We're finishing off any bottles that are left. In the case of today at the winery, people went over into the tasting room and bought cheese and stayed Mm. and, you know, they got a discount on bottles. So it kind of turns into a whole social activity. And I think that's why the yoga studios like it. It gets their students more engaged. And Mm -hmm. it's definitely something that, like you said, it's all about balance, mind, body, and spirit. And I think it just kind of goes really well. So I've definitely seen it growing. And I just find like, I can see beer and yoga, but the difference between say wine and tequila or something, wine is about the slow relaxation of the body. It's not about, you know, shooters or whatever. Right. And so that slow relaxation through breath and yoga poses just seems like a natural segue into sipping wine. I mean, it just seems yes. at the same pace and the same kind of mindfulness because wine usually, (laughs) unless you're drinking too much or too quickly, is about being in the moment, not getting mindless. Exactly. So that seems well suited too. Yes, absolutely. So if you could, I know you don't incorporate wine with exact poses, but if we could just have some fun with proposing different types of wine with poses, what would you pair? What type of wine would you pair with, say, Warrior One pose? Well, Warrior One is a little bit of a grounding pose, right? So yep. your feet are on the ground, but your chest is open, your arms are wide. So maybe something like an oak Chardonnay. You're open and you're ready to receive. 
but you're still grounded by that oak, right? So right. I think I'm in a very Chardonnay mindset. I taught a Chardonnay class today. But, <laughs> Is that uh, what you have in your glass, by the way? I actually have Sauvignon Blanc in my glass. Oh, okay. That's fine. <laughs> but from the winery where I taught, because we drink a bunch of Chardonnay and then it is summer here in Texas and they told me this was a good boat wine. So ah, that's okay. what I bought today. But yeah, I think something like an oak Chardonnay would go well because it's kind of got that lightness to it, but you're still mm-hmm. grounded. Grounded. So nice I like that. Awesome. And what would we pair then with Downward Dog? So Downward Dog is kind of more of a grounding pose. It can be considered a resting pose, but you know, of course people argue with you about (laughs) that. So it can kind of soothe your nerves and calm you. So maybe something a little bit more full body, maybe something like a Cabernet Sauvignon or something like that. Something you would eat with comfort food, something that's very comforting to you. I would think of pairing with like a down dog or a child's pose, something like that. All right. I'll belabor this just for two more poses. (laughs) The tree pose. So tree pose, you're very light, airy, open, kind of ready to take on the world and feeling light and maybe a sparkling wine, you know, ah. maybe feeling kind of bubbly, you're floating almost in tree pose, right? You're, you yeah. have only one foot on the ground and you're balanced. So maybe I would even say champagne, right? Because champagne is a sparkling wine, but it's very balanced right? Because mm-hmm. it's aged on the leaves. And so it has that little bit of toastiness and that breadiness that comes with it, but it's still that Chardonnay grape and it's still got those, those lemon and those kind of citrus flavors as well. So there you go. Tree post. <laughs> Excellent. Last Making one. This up. Here we go. <laughs> You're doing great. Last one. Half moon. Half moon is a challenging pose. Okay. So I'd probably pick a wine that maybe is a little bit harder for some people to like. So maybe I would say okay. Riesling. Okay. Because as we know, some people love Riesling and some people are still think of Riesling as just those really, really sweet styles of wine, right? So Riesling would be something that's generally, if you're at a dinner table, might be a harder sell in for a large group of people, a little bit challenging, just like half moon. Wow. <laughs> you're good. You're good on the spot too. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> This is so interesting. Is there anything that we haven't covered that you'd like to talk about when it comes to wine and yoga? I think really the main thing and one of the things I say in my class is they're both about balance, right? So you want your wine to be balanced. You don't want too much alcohol or sugar or acidity or tannin. And yoga is about balance in many ways, right? Because A, you need balance to do yoga. Mm -hmm. And B, this is true of yoga and wine. Maybe you need yoga in your life to balance out your crazy life. Yes. Or maybe you need wine in your life to kind of chill you out and balance you out from your crazy life. But they're both about balance. And I think that that's something that really makes them fit really well together as well. So I just think that they are the perfect pairing. And that's why I think what we're doing is caught on and has been so successful. I think you've hit a great idea and market and the demographics. You've got it all there, Morgan. Where can we find you online? So we're at yogaunwind.com and that's U-N-W-I-N-E-D. And so people often forget the E, but it's kind of a little play on words. Mm -hmm. Yogaunwind.com. And then on Instagram, we're just at yogaunwind. And then Facebook, we're at yogaunwindnyc. I started it in NYC, so, yep. but now we are in Austin, Texas and New York City. Excellent. I'm sure people will want to reach out to you, including wineries. Hopefully. Absolutely. Morgan, it's been an absolute delight to talk to you. I'm inspired to keep up with my own very basic yoga practice and incorporate some wine tasting in there. Morgan, thank you so much. Yes, thank um, you so much. Yeah, and I raise my glass to Cheers. you. Cheers. And namaste. Not namaste. Not namaste. <laughs> namaste. Thanks, Morgan. Wasn't that terrific? Here are my takeaways from this discussion. Number one, I love the mind body integration Morgan uses to teach about wine in her classes. I'm a firm believer that we remember what we learn when we engage all of our senses, which is exactly what I do in my online courses. Two, it's clever how she uses cooling poses when the heart is above the brain to talk about cool climate wines. I just like that concept. Three, it's interesting how many parallels there are between wine and yoga. Both are ancient traditions, 
Both value balance as a core concept. Both work with breath, from the breathing on each move in yoga to the inhaling we do to detect aromas on wines, and then our breath out on the finish to get an even keener sense of those aromas. So just a note that Morgan's website has since changed from the one that she mentions in the podcast. I'll put a link to the new one in the show notes at nataliemcclain.com forward slash 25, along with links to her social media handles. So did you know that you can now listen to this podcast on your smart speaker? Just say, hey, Google, or Alexa, play the Unreserved Wine Talk podcast. I'd love to chat about wine with you while you're doing the dishes, the laundry, having breakfast, lunch, dinner. It's always wine time. So what was your favorite tip or quote from this episode? Share that with me, please, on Twitter or Facebook and tag me at Natalie McLean. On Instagram, I'm at Natalie McLean Wine. If you like this episode, please tell a friend about it, especially one who is interested in wine and yoga. My podcast is easy to find. All you have to do is search on Google for its name, Unreserved Wine Talk, or my name. Finally, if you want to take your ability to pair wine and food to the next level, join me in a free online video class at nataliemcclain.com forward slash class. On next week's show, I'll be chatting about wine and war, which is part two of my personal reflections on how wine impacts our culture. If you missed part one, you can listen to that now from last week's episode, number 24. You don't want to miss one juicy episode of this podcast, especially the secret full-bodied bonus episodes that I don't announce on social media. So subscribe for free now at nataliemcclain.com forward slash subscribe. Meet me here next week. Cheers.